As tensions between police and certain communities seem to keep rising, we're going to look at how cops are trying to make things better. We've got files reporters live in three local communities. Then the first Republican debate just two days away, and all the candidates are prepping and they're preparing for one Donald Trump. But what can we expect from the Donald? Also, imagine if you make a political donation, then find out the person you donated to is using those same funds to defend himself against corruption charges. Well, that's exactly what's happening in Albany right now, and believe it or not, it's legal. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we start with an event called National Night Out. Police officers nationwide, they're holding events right now to improve relations with their communities. NYPD Commissioner Bill Bratton recently said that this is the worst climate that he has seen himself in decades. All of this, of course, comes in the wake of many encounters between police and residents that have ended in tragedy, mostly in communities of color. Now, I'm talking about incidents like Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, Eric Garner in Staten Island, and I can go on and on. Now, all of that has led to massive protests that we've seen from coast to coast and the birth of a movement called Black Lives Matter. Well, today, from coast to coast, police departments, they're trying to improve that situation. And we have Fios One reporters live in three local communities to get those perspectives. And we begin in Newark, where Natalie Patterson joins us. Cecilia Dow will join us in Uniondale and Lindsay Christian in Mount Vernon. But first, let's start with Natalie. Good evening. I'm here at Westside Park here in Newark. This is one of the largest events in the city for National Night Out. Of course, it feels like a party right now. You have people eating in the background. We got burgers and hot dogs going. There's a dunk tank. Feels like a party, but there's really a greater meaning to National Night Out right here in Newark. And I'm joined by Pastor Gloria Johnson. She is a pastor right here in this community. And uh, Pastor, we really just want to talk to you about what is the community hoping for and praying for after the turbulent few years that we've seen. Uh, Ferguson, Missouri, Eric Gardner on Staten Island. What are you hearing from residents? A better relationship with the police officers and the neighborhood. Uh, a deeper understanding. Uh, they want to be protected, but they want to also see the police officers serve and protect. I know that's something even Mayor Ross Baraka here in Newark has been working on, doing the Occupy the Block events uh, on the weekends. How do you get there? It seems such a difficult place to get, to get a 100% positive relationship between law enforcement community and residents in the community. Well, it, actually what I really feel is that the community, it, it needs to be more of the board meeting type setting where the community uh, leaders and the officers of the mayor have a meeting together. So where so they come together and they sit down and they begin to voice uh, and discuss the things that are going on in the neighborhood so that they will become a better, you have more of a better relationship. Uh, like, for instance, if there's training that's needed, more training, then the, the people, the community need to voice their opinion to the mayor, to the chief of police on what it is that they feel that, that needs to take place because we, we do need protection because there's a lot of things going on out here. And so we need to be protected, but we also need to be served. And this is what we need to, to help this community to come together because the police officers are a part of our community. The fire officers are part of our community. So, and we need, we, we, we really need for this umbrella to take place because knowing that God is at the top, and all of this falls under that umbrella. And uh, Pastor, we were speaking, and you're not the only person here to say this today. But people have really been reminiscing about Newark 30 years ago, 20 years ago, talking about police officers being able to, you know, put their guns in their cars, their hats in their cars, and go play some basketball with the youth. It's a tough spot to be in, of course, because Newark, like Newark, like many other cities, are short-staffed right now as far as officers go. But are there barriers that still need to be broken down for residents themselves and for the police officers to bring them together? Yes, there are. There are a lot of barriers that still need to be broken down because uh, a lot of them have the fear of the police officers because they don't, they're, they're not sure how they're going to be taken 
or uh, they're not sure to read the amount, of, the amount of respect that's there. The barriers have to come down. The, the, the residents are afraid and the police officers are afraid. They're afraid of what they're going to encounter when they step into a certain area because you can't at this point in life, they can't lay their, their uh, weapons down, unfortunately. And that's it's really sad to say. You know, uh, and I, in my heart to heart, the way I feel is that a lot of the activities for our youth, because it's a lot of the youth that, that, that are missing a lot of things. When I was coming up, there were a lot of activities for the youth. Uh, there was a lot of programs for the youth, and a lot of those things have been taken away from them, and it gives them nothing to do, actually. They really have nothing to do but to get into the mischief that they're in. You know, so, you know, when some of them would drop out, there was manpower. When I was coming up, there was manpower, things of that nature, for the children and the young people to go into. If they failed in school, they had nowhere to go, they would go to manpower or different programs like that to help them to increase their knowledge. Because what do we say? We say knowledge is power. Absolutely. Knowledge is power. And we, we as a church, we, as, as, a, as a community here, we all come together as one so that things can take place in our community. We, we just need to bond closer, you know, because police, police officers are people too. They're people. They're people, and we need them. Because uh, even if we look in the Bible, God had his guards too. And this is, he, there's anointed men and women of God that's on the police force. And we have to respect them in that manner. They are anointed men and women of God. Thank you so much. Pastor Gloria Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. You know, it's a great night to get together. Uh, as the pastor said, police officers are here, sheriff, EMTs, they're all here, hundreds of people. If you want to come check out National Night Out here at Westside Park, this event will be going on through 10 p.m. tonight. For Richard French Live, Natalie Patterson, Fios One News. Thank you very much, Natalie. Now we're going to head over to Cecilia Dowd, who is live with us out of Uniondale, out on Long Island. Well, here at the Uniondale Fire Department, tonight's event is just getting underway. People just starting to arrive. Now, this is a community that's seen its fair share of crime, and events like tonight's are meant to bridge that gap that may exist between the police and the community, kind of quell any tension that exists between the two. Now, I spoke with the commissioner of the Uniondale Fire Department that told me tonight, so events like tonight really are meant to help people guide them in the right direction. Uniondale does have a crime problem like all the surrounding communities. We're losing a lot of our youth to crime, either as victims or perpetrators. And tonight is a time to show them a different way, maybe a different career path, introduce them to people of good character. I think it makes the kids feel comfortable being around the police officers on a more relaxed environment. And it's, it's actually a fun time. Now, for more information on National Night Out events across Long Island, you can head to our Facebook page. Reporting from Uniondale, Cecilia Dowd, Fios One News. All right, and next we're going to head out to Mount Vernon in Westchester County. That's Lindsay Christian who joins us right now. Lindsay. Good evening, Richard. Well, Mount Vernon police are currently interacting with adults and children here in the middle of Levester Towers. They're focused on the Stop and Shake initiative to bridge the gap with the community by shaking hands and getting to know the people. I did talk to some members of the community, and they say right now the sense here is broken. This after 42-year-old Raynette Turner, a mother of eight, was found dead in her jail cell just last week while in police custody. I did also talk to the lieutenant of the Mount Vernon Police Department. He says he's hoping tonight will open a dialogue dialogue among the community. A community activist also told me that tonight's discussion is much needed after Turner's death. We have to stick together as a community and go through this and work this out and, and it, it will come out good in the end and uh, we'll still stay united. And, you know, the police together with the community and it shouldn't uh, affect the community negatively. They really want to discuss how we can prevent these kind of things from happening. And community members are encouraged to join police here tonight until 9 p.m. And that is the very latest from Mount Vernon. Lindsay Christian, Richard French Live. Thank you very much, Lindsay. And speaking of Mount Vernon, coming up, we're going to look at a death while in police custody that you heard just referenced there. We're going to also tell you why this will be the first case the state attorneys general is investigating. And also, we take a closer look at police community relations and how contentious has become as we've even found on this very program. But first, 
We'll preview Thursday night's Republican debate. Fox has just announced who's in and who's out and what we can expect from the man that everyone will be watching, believe it or not, Donald Trump.